Welcome to the training on working remotely. This training will cover ergonomics as well as give you tips and tricks for working remote. The goal of this training is to help you learn the tools necessary to be safe and productive while working remotely. If you require additional information or have any other questions on ergonomics or working from home, please contact trainingfac at flautism.com. The first thing we're going to cover is tips for working remotely. Please watch the following video. This video is from Listicle and is titled 10 Tips to Effectively Work From Home. For many workers, having the flexibility of being able to work from home has been a dream they've pursued for a long time. There are indeed real benefits to working remotely, but there are also big challenges to overcome. Here are 10 tips to effectively work from home. Number 1. Get started early. When working in an office, your morning commute can help you wake up and feel ready to work by the time you get to your desk. At home, however, the transition from your pillow to your computer can be more of a task in itself. One way to work from home productively is to dive into your to-do list as soon as you wake up. Simply getting a project started first thing in the morning can be the key to making progress on it gradually throughout the day. Otherwise, you'll prolong breakfast and let the morning sluggishness wear away your motivation. Number 2. Pretend like you are going into the office. The mental association you make between work and an office can make you more productive, and there's no reason that feeling should be lost when working remotely. When working from home, do all the things you'd do to prepare for an office role, set your alarm, make or go get coffee, and wear nice clothes. Get fully ready for the day, and pretend you're actually going to work. Otherwise, you might find yourself back in bed. Number 3. Structure your day like you would in the office. When working from home, you are your own personal manager. Without things like an in-person meeting schedule to break up your day, you can be quick to lose focus or burn out. To stay on schedule, segment what you'll do and when, over the course of the day. If you have an online calendar, create personal events and reminders that tell you when to shift gears and start on new tasks. Number 4. Choose a dedicated workspace. Just because you're not working at an office doesn't mean you can't have an office. Rather than staying put in your room or on the couch, spaces that are associated with leisure time, dedicate a specific room or surface in your home to work. Have a place you go specifically to work. It could be a certain table, chair or some place that's consistently your workspace. It helps you get into the right frame of mind. Number 5. Communicate expectations with anyone who will be home with you. Of course, you might be working from home, but you still have company. Make sure any roommates, siblings, parents or spouses respect your space during work hours. Just because you're working from home doesn't mean you're home. If anyone else is going to be at home when you're working, they just have to be clear that when you're in your working from home, you're working, even if it looks like and feels like you're hanging out at home. Number 6. Deal with distractions well. Anyone working from home inevitably gets distracted, and it's obviously even worse if you have easy access to television or social media. However, try to keep yourself distracted in the same ways you did at work. Let yourself stray for 5 minutes, but not binge watch movies or television series. Number 7. Work when you're at your most productive. Nobody sprints through their work from morning to evening, your motivation will naturally ebb and flow throughout the day. When you're working from home, however, it's all the more important to know when those ebbs and flows will take place and plan your schedule around it. To capitalize on your most productive periods, save your harder tasks for when you know you'll be in the right headspace for them. Use slower points of the day to knock out the easier, logistical tasks that are also on your plate. These easier tasks, when completed successfully, can help build your momentum for the heavier projects that are waiting for you later on. Number 8. Use technology to stay connected. Working from home might help you focus on your work in the short term, but it can also make you feel cut off from the larger operation happening in the office. Instant messaging and video conferencing tools can make it easy to check in with coworkers 
and remind you how your work is contributing to the big picture. Number 9. Take clear breaks. It can be so easy to get distracted when working remotely, that you avoid breaks altogether. Don't let the guilt of working in the building you sleep in, prevent you from taking 5 minutes to relax. Rather than just opening YouTube and watching some comfort clips, however, use your breaks to get away from your desk. Go for a walk outside or spend time with others, who might also be in the house. Number 10. Pick a definitive finishing time each day. You might be under the impression that working from home establishes more work-life balance, but be careful with that assumption. Working from home can also feel like being at a casino, you can get so caught up in your activity, in a relaxing environment, that you lose complete track of time. In lieu of co-workers, whose packing up and leaving the office reminds you to do the same, set an alarm at the end of the day, to indicate your normal workday is coming to an end. You don't have to stop at exactly that time, but knowing the workday is technically over, can help you start the process of saving your work, and calling it quits for the evening. Let us know in the comments, if you are struggling with any of the tips, while working from home. Like, comment and subscribe to Out Channel, for more listicle videos. And don't forget to hit the bell icon, to receive notifications of upcoming listicle videos. At the end of this training, you will find additional resources and tips and tricks on how to effectively work remotely. Next up, we're going to talk about effective tips and tricks for staying safe and healthy while working remotely. At this time, I'd like to share with you some tips and tricks from Eric Roberts, who is a physical therapist, and Karen Jacobs, who is an occupational therapist as well as a certified ergonomist. These tips come from the article, Cheap Ways to Make Your Work from Home Space More Ergonomic and Better for Your Back. Change your posture often. It's crucial that you vary your posture throughout the day, because sitting in the same position or chair all day can lead to back, neck, and shoulder pain. Put a pillow on your seat. Placing a thin pillow underneath your seat can go a long way to making an ordinary chair feel a lot more comfortable. If you don't have a pillow, you could also fold up a fluffy towel for the same effect. Draping a soft towel over the back of your chair is also a small thing that can make your chair feel plush. Add a rolled towel for lumbar support. If you're someone who struggles with lower back pain, lumbar support pillows that rest on your back of your pelvis have been shown to increase comfort while seated. You don't need to buy a fancy pillow to accomplish this effect. Put your feet up. Supporting your feet on an elevated surface or stretching your legs long increases circulation and can feel nice. Ideally, your hips and thighs should form a 90 degree angle when you sit in your chair. Elevate your laptop. It's crucial that you vary your posture throughout the day because sitting in the same position or chair all day can lead to back, neck, and shoulder pain. Take breaks. Most people take breaks to walk around when they're in the office, but when you're at home, we have a tendency to just be focused, so we might forget to take breaks. Set a timer to go off every 30 minutes to take a break for three to five minutes. Get up and walk around or do some quick stretches at your desk. If you are interested in learning about some stretches, under the additional resources at the end of this training, the article titled, Working From Home, Here's How To Make Your Setup More Ergonomic, has information on some of these stretches. At this time, we're gonna watch a video on ergonomics of working from home. This video will give you some tips and tricks on how to take ordinary objects around your house to make the most ergonomic workspace available. Hi, my name is Rachel Banick and I work for a company called Neutral Posture. Today we're going to talk about how to make your remote working as ergonomic as possible by utilizing things that you already have in your home. It would be amazing and wonderful if everyone had the opportunity to go out and purchase a Neutral Posture chair, high adjustable desk, all of those great things before going to remote work, but we realized that's not the case. So we wanted to provide a video for you to work as ergonomically as possible without having to have any sort of expensive implementations. So first thing we wanna do is find where we're gonna be sitting or working for the time being, right? So I've picked this awesome recliner that's been in the family for a long time and uh, it's very soft and comfortable. So that's where I'm gonna be working today. So the first thing is this recliner is huge. 
and I'm only five foot one, so I'm gonna make some adjustments by adding pillows to push me forward in the chair. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add this big bed pillow here, it gives me that full support, but it's still not enough for me, so I'm gonna add one more little couch pillow to get good lumbar support in my lower back here. So, okay, now I'm far enough forward in the chair, and I can tell that in two ways. One, my feet are flat on the floor. And while my feet are flat on the floor, I can slide three finger widths between the back of my knee and the front of the seat. So this sensitive area behind your knee is called your popliteal region. And a lot of nerves and blood flow run through there. And so we wanna make sure we provide ample space um, and nothing's hitting the back of that area. It can actually cause your feet to fall asleep if you sit too far back in a chair and it starts putting pressure back there. So we don't want that. Okay. So I'm far enough forward in the chair, my feet are flat on the floor, I have enough space between the back of my knee and the front of the seat. And then the last thing I wanna think about as far as my spine and my diaphragm go is that I wanna have an open trunk thigh angle. So that means the angle between my thighs and my chest is more than 90 degrees. A lot of people think you wanna sit straight up, but that actually collapses your diaphragm a little bit. It puts some per uh, pressure in your low back here and we don't want that. So we want to sit at an open trunk thigh angle, about 100 degrees to 120 degrees. Okay, so that's our spine, our knees, our hips, everything in alignment here. So the next thing I want to do is work on my monitor, okay? So you'll notice that I've added a ream of paper to my laptop here, because if I don't, my monitor sits too low. So without it, my monitor sits here, and that's too low for my range of motion. So when we think about the ergonomics of our eyes, our eyes have more range of motion downward than they do upward. So we wanna make sure that when we're making adjustments, we put our monitor, uh, the top of the monitor, at our resting eye height. So this would be about right, which is why I grabbed this ring of paper and just set that right there. Now, if you don't have reams of paper, maybe you have some old books lying around or a textbook or a code book or something you can use to help prop your monitor up. So I've got my monitor at the right height now. Um, the other thing I wanna do is hopefully you have an external keyboard and mouse that you can use because now we've raised this laptop up so far that if I used it way up here, I'm shrugging my shoulders and we don't want that. We don't wanna shrug our shoulders. That's gonna put pain and tension in our neck right here. It's not a good thing. So what I'm gonna do is take another pillow. Again, all things that you can find around your home and I'm gonna put my external keyboard right here. So our goal here, right, we've already got our open trunk thigh angle, I'm supported from head to toe, and now I'm gonna support my arms by utilizing this pillow. So I've got my open, or my keyboard here, my external keyboard, my arms are supported, my shoulders aren't shrugging, but they don't feel like they're hanging either. So last thing I'm gonna do now that I have my keyboard in place, I'm gonna pull my monitor closer to me. So the big thing here, and most people don't know this, is you wanna be able, in your relaxed position, that open angle, you wanna be able to reach out and palm your screen here, okay? And the reason for that is because what ends up happening is our font on our screen is too small, and so we end up leaning forward, and that puts a lot of pressure in our low back, it collapses our diaphragm, and it's just not a good position. We wanna make sure that we can pull that monitor towards us, so that we can reach out and palm it. And that's the correct distance for me uh, from an eye standpoint, eye ergonomics. So we have our eye ergonomics in place. We have our shoulders and our wrists supported here. And of course, going back to the chair, we have our backs, our lumbar, even our necks are in a good position, right? So this should be from head to toe, one of the best postures for you to work in. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. And be sure to follow us to have uh, more of these sort of ergonomic conversations. Thanks for watching. Next up, I would like to share with you some additional resources on ergonomics as well as working from home. These resources include videos as well as articles. You can find a PowerPoint copy of this presentation on Paylocity under the company homepage. From here, from this presentation, you'll be able to click on any of the links to take you directly to the videos or articles mentioned in this presentation. If you have any additional questions or concerns, please contact trainingfac at flautism.com.